What's up everybody? Doug Timmons, 18 Greens TV, coming at you from Encinitas Ranch Golf Course. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the grip. We're going to be talking about the different types of grips, the different hand positions, the different sizes of the actual grips themselves, and also a grip trainer that I really like. That you can actually put on a cut down club and have it around the house or have it in the bag for when you're warming up. Something to put your hands on the club perfectly every single time. So, let's get to work. Okay, here we go. We're going to go over the three different types of grips. The first grip is called the overlap grip. So I always start with my left hand on the club first. And the way that I grip it with my left is I run the very butt end of the club down to the pad of my left hand and run it down to the very base of my pointer finger of my left hand. So it's going to be running down something like that. Wrap my hand on and then it creates a V. So my pointer finger and my right thumb create the V and I like to always have my V at my right shoulder. That's a pretty neutral grip. The interlock grip would be the next one. So same thing, I always start with my left hand. Now you take your pinky finger, you put it underneath and in between your pointer and your middle of your left hand. And once you do that, same thing. You wrap that right hand right on top of the left thumb. Again, it should fit just like a puzzle. And then the thumb goes over and you get the little separation there. That would be the interlock. And so the final one um, that I use a, a lot for my junior golfers is the four finger grip. It seems to be the most comfortable for the kids for some, for some reason. Um, easiest one to put on, you take your right hand, you put it right on top of your pointer finger of your left hand, then you, same thing, you wrap that thumb right on top of, you wrap your right hand right on top of the thumb, and then again, you have that V, a little bit of hook with the right finger underneath, just get the little separation, and then you have your four finger grip. So those are the three types of grips. You have the overlap, you have the interlock, and you have the four finger. So it's all preference. So it's all based on what feels the best in your hands and gets the club face to react the best during your swing. So those are the three grips. So we're gonna go over the three different types of hand positions. So we're gonna start with what, I, what is called the, a weak grip or an open face grip. And a, a good way to kind of judge what grip you want to use is whatever it is to make it easier for you to square the club face through the hitting area. So very important that when you choose what grip you use, you, you don't want to have much club face manipulation through the hitting area on just your normal stock swing. So that's a good way of judging what hand position you want to use when gripping the club. So we're going to start with the open face grip or the, the weak grip, also referred to as the weak grip. So as you put your left hand on, you look over and the only thing that you're going to see when you put your left hand on is you're going to see the very top of your thumb. You shouldn't see any knuckles in your left hand or your lead hand. And then when you hinge your wrists up, you put your right hand on and then once you do that your right hand and we're looking at those V's they're going to be pointed right over either to the very center of your chest or actually over to your left shoulder so when I put my right hand on it's going to look something like that and that would be called an open faced or a weak grip which requires a lot more club face manipulation through the hitting area so um, those maybe with a little bit higher swing speed um, maybe you can put uh, your hands on there a little bit more weak or open face. Not one that I really suggest for the majority of golfers, but it is used. So um, the next one that I like to use is called the neutral grip or the squared face grip. So we look over over onto our left or our lead hand when we put our when we put our our lead or left hand on, um, and I like to always see about two and a half knuckles. That always tells me my grip is in a pretty good position, almost exactly how my hand's gonna hang. And then when I hinge it up, I put my right hand on, or my back hand, and then the V's are gonna be pointed just to the inside of my right shoulder. So this grip requires a lot less club face manipulation through the hitting area, and 
I like that the best because I'm not trying to over rotate or hold the club off. Um, and the next grip we're going to go over is called the strong grip or closed face grip. And when we do that, uh, when we put our lead hand or our left hand, um, we're going to see about three and a half, almost all four knuckles over onto your lead or left hand. And when I hinge my wrists up, I'm going to put my right hand on or my back hand and that the V's of both hands, those V's are going to be pointed to the outside of my right shoulder. Now this grip um, requires a lot, lot less uh, club face manipulation through the hitting area. Actually, the, the really good players the, with the higher club head speed, the Dustin Johnsons, are really holding the club face off through the hitting area with their strong face or their close face or strong grip. Um, also a good one for maybe juniors or, or ladies um, that have a hard time rotating the club face with any sort of speed or squaring the face up through the hitting area. That'll also get them to square the club face up a little bit better. So those are the three hand positions. And again, be really, um, do, your, do your homework. Figure out which one you want to use, why you want to use it, and which one helps you with the least amount of club face manipulation through the hitting area. Those are the three grips. Uh, the four different sizes of grips are gonna be the smaller size for juniors or for ladies. You have the regular size, you have the mid size, and then you have the jumbo or oversized. And with any of those, you can always add extra wraps and manipulate the grips a little bit, but actually take some time, maybe see one of your PGA pros or somebody at the local golf shops to help you with that. Very important. Now I want to go over just one of my favorite grip trainers. It's already built in. You can see it has all, it's very used as you can tell. I use this a lot. Um, and I have one for each one of my students during clinics too when we go over the grip because it puts your hands right in the right position. So this one happens to be attached to a weighted club which is helpful for me when I'm warming up. That way you, you're always getting your hands in the right position. Similar to what I said earlier, there's the little built-in V and also built-in V at the top. You can put this on a cut down club. You can just build a club with the head completely cut off and leave it around the house. Whatever you decide to do and how crazy you want to get with learning your grip right away. And again, you start using something like this and it just turns into bulletproof. And with a bulletproof grip, you start getting some good results. Doug Timmons, 18 Greens TV, the basics about the grip, it's a wrap.